Hi everyone, sorry I can't be there today uh, for our lesson. Um, and also I think Miss Anderson's class is also going to be using this recording. So hello Miss Anderson's class. Uh, as you will all have started looking at your non-exam assessment uh, last lesson when we launched it, uh, this lesson we want to try and expand upon um, our early thoughts and come up with many more ideas for our project. I'm going to try and do a bit of extra support on how we come up with ideas as we go through. But to start with, just a quick reminder, because there might be one or two people not there or a few people that have already forgotten what the contexts are. Uh, so the contexts are the theme that the projects have to meet this, this year. And we've got three themes and you've got to pick one of them. Um, so our three themes, uh, preparing for emergencies, which I'm going to be honest, I think is the hardest of the three. Um, I've struggled to call lots of project ideas there, but it is doable. Um, outdoor living and keeping fit and active, both of which I think are, are quite similar um, in terms of uh, how many ideas we can come up with. And actually sometimes similar in the type of ideas we might have. Um, so I would suggest most of us are probably looking at outdoor living or keeping fit and active. Okay, If you're doing preparing for emergencies, great guns okay particularly if you've already got some strong ideas um as i said i just think it's harder to come up with lots of and lots of ideas um cool so just going to quickly go through the uh slides from last lesson where we looked at the mood boards which are just trying to give you some ideas of areas we might look at and think about everything in here from covid to mountain rescue um and we're trying to identify what might be suitable products that we might make now at this point, I'm going to be careful here, but you can make anything. I'm being careful. The reason why I'm saying I'm being careful is because in reality, long term, we'll change it and say, no, you can't. But today, because you're writing down lots of ideas, you can make anything that fits this context. OK, if you want to make a stretch, if you want to make an ambulance, if you want to make us a flood barrier. Yeah, write that down. I think we'll then have to come and have a conversation, which we will do next week. We're going to have one to one conversations with every student and agree your project. Um, and we might say, you know what, making that ambulance probably a little bit too, too big, too difficult. Don't really have storage space for an ambulance in the department. Um, just to give you an idea. But for now, coming up with ideas. Great. We need some sensible ones. We need some maybe not so sensible ones. We can have, I like to say, weird, wacky and wonderful ideas. Or we can look for some good, bad, and ugly ideas. It doesn't matter, I want them all. Um, cool. So, next one context outdoor living. I uh, quite like this one. I spend a lot of my time outdoors, so this, this suits me quite well. But anything here from outdoor games, gardening, through to social times outside, uh, there's lots to choose from. Actually, you can write, name any product on the planet and add the word outdoor in front of it, and there's an outdoor product for outdoor living. OK, so um, an outdoor laptop. Laptops are going to be too complex. They won't be able to make a laptop, but just a, just the thought, you know, we'll do some outdoor working. How can I how can I use a laptop outdoors? There's a product idea. OK, so a couple of things we sort of here. Once again, thinking about our size, but also we want to think about whether something's going to be dangerous. So we might decide against making something that's a bit dangerous. And keeping fit and active. I like that. I like this one for you guys not saying you must choose it definitely not but if you if you've got a, an active sport or activity you do outside of school designing and making a product for something that you already do outside of school probably means you're going to get a bit more of a passion for it if you get into your project and you start enjoying your project i'll tell you now you get a better grade because you put more time into it um i'm living proof of that um my other projects had one that i really liked I did it really, really well. I know a project I didn't like, and I didn't do it very well. It it just happens, and that was that was in the same subject. I did well in one area, not well in another. So definitely worth really thinking about bit, things you enjoy. You would see through this PowerPoint, uh, different mountaineering type things and camping things keep getting mentioned. That's my hobby, so I've pushed it into my PowerPoint. You you will probably do the same with your hobbies. I hope. So the task for today's lesson is to produce a mind map for the context you would like the sound of the most. Now, if you're unsure, pick one of 
context two or context three. Um, you can do more than one context. If you go, oh, I'm not sure between these two contexts, you can do two mind maps. But I expect you to do two good mind maps, not two rubbish mind maps, because you have having to do twice the work. You have to put twice the effort in if that's the case. So you want two good mind maps. So let's try and pick one, do one good mind map, saves you a bit of work. Uh, you can use all the ideas that we're throwing out right now in this PowerPoint, or I'm talking about, or if there's still any on the, the whiteboard in T1. Yeah, use those ideas, but you need to add to them. If you only copy what I've done, I'm afraid I can't mark it. Okay, I, I can't give you any marks because it's just a copy. So you need lots of your own ideas. So here on this slide, I've given you some examples of sort of the start point. Okay, um, whereas I know my class last lesson, I just asked you to write a list of project ideas and some of you found that really tough. And actually it is tough, just write, thinking what could I make in writing a list? So what I've done here is I've come up with some subheadings. Um, so if I focus on outdoor living, I've got my subheadings here, garden, camping, homelessness, animals, parks. I just try to think of places people spend outdoors or outdoor pay based problems. So taking the garden, for example, I would come up with ideas of different products in the garden, be it from a, a table, bird feeder, shed, shovel, watering can, lighting, speakers, what, whatever. There's a whole host of things I would see in a garden. All of them could be a product, could be something you could have as a project. Um, same if you go to keeping fit and active, there's a real bonus here. I, I started doing this with my, my class yesterday. Just started listing sports. Now we're not designing a sport, that, that doesn't work for, for DT, but we could design a product associated with a sport. So in this example, I've picked football, national sport, Euro start uh, this evening. So uh, it seemed to be an obvious choice. I had designed some sort of mini goalposts, training equipment, boot cleaning device, I'm just listing some products that might be useful for us. Now, I'm going to be honest, probably half of what I've come up with as ideas are rubbish. And that's OK, because all you need is one good idea. And I use the example of James Dyson when he invented the DC01 vacuum cleaner, the, his first vacuum. He had over a thousand fails, a thousand attempts that didn't work before he found the one that did work. And here we're just coming up with maybe 50 ideas to find one good idea. OK, so that, that's sort of the my, my approach to how we go about coming up with this part of this page is you have some subheadings and then write ideas that link to that subheading. And you feel free to use my subheadings. Come up with your own as well. That'd be great. Um, now, two ways in which we do a mind map. So now we're looking at the nitty gritty of how we actually go about completing a mind map. Um, you can do them electronically, which I'm going to explain on this slide still, or we can do them by hand, and that's on the next slide. Um, I'm a massive fan of doing them by hand. However, we've now got access to a, a program in school that allows us to do them electronically. So if you feel that's better for you, that, that that's how you work, maybe you think your handwriting lets you down a little bit. I'll hold my hand up there, mine sometimes does. Um, then yeah, do it on a computer. Uh, be mindful, we only have 11 computers in the room right now. Uh, so that's a short, a small number of you that can do a computer-based piece of work. If there's a year 10 class in T2 next door, uh, I don't know if there is right now, uh, you may be able to, a couple of you um, who are going to be nicely independent and well-behaved, could maybe go and work next door and use the computers there. <coughs> But as I said, doing it by hand, doing it neatly by hand, great, do it do it that way. Um, <clears throat> so this program that I've done these mind maps on is uh, it's a piece of software in the focus learning suite of programs that we've, we've paid for for DT. You can find that by clicking all programs in the bottom left of, this, of the screen, uh, finding the carts file, uh, and then it's just this focus education. It's a web-based program, so it takes you to the internet. Um, you could just go straight into the internet and put in focuslearning.co.uk. Uh, if you are using this one, you will all need the username and password. 
Um, so if you've gone down the, the, the direct link, um, you won't need it but to log in, but you will need it to save your work. So that's the username and password on the screen there. Um, please do use it, um, otherwise the work you do today won't count. Uh, we will have a bit of another lesson working on this because I want to see your work. If it's not, com if we feel it's not complete, you've, you've not really put the effort in this lesson, and by the end of the the next lesson where we're working with you, then this will be homework. So I'm giving you that warning now that this needs to be completed by the end of next week. You get one more lesson after this, so and that lesson will have other bits in it. Anything you don't do will be homework. So the more you do now, the less you've got to do at home. Okay, so just try and help you out there, give you a bit of forewarning. And then if you're doing this by hand, here are a couple of waggles. Um, it's the same concept. You want to use subheadings, and then we want to um, write lots of ideas around it. As you see, this is from previous year. So this is for providing a safe and comfortable home. Um, so the person is saying, oh, just took the words apart. Went, okay, safe, waterproofing, locks, clean, secure, railings, grip, well made. It's just a bunch of words, but that, that will help them come up with ideas for their project. So those give, that gives you a, a few ideas. Now, as you see on these waggles, they've already got color on them. Don't worry too much about color right now. Uh, that's part of the next lesson where we're gonna look at adding color in a, the correct way, the correct way method of adding color to enhance key ideas so don't worry too much about it right now um, on the next slide i've got a couple of more sort of words and, and bits of pointers that might give you some ideas for projects but in reality it's over to you to come up with as many projects as you can use the structure that i've given you to try and help guide you guide your thought process um, but i'd quite like this the the table on the left here so it's just a list of things you carry hold wear sit on climb stand on use look at listen to throw away actually can you think of a product you hold when outdoor living okay um i'm thinking right now i'll hold a um, spatula whilst i'm at the barbecue and actually i have to then put that down to pick someone else up there's there's something i might want to try and solve a problem about so Using some of these words, you might be able to come up with other projects and other ideas. I'm not saying you will. I, I find this quite useful. Other people, I've shown this before to people in the past, and some people go, oh, this is great. I've got loads of ideas. And other students just look and go, I don't get it. I don't understand this bit. And that's fine. There's lots of different ways here to come up with ideas for projects. Okay, I, I like this one because it comes from the direction of the user of the product. Okay rather than thinking of just products itself it starts thinking about the client to start with but there's lots let's say lots of different ways to come up with ideas so that is today's lesson you need to get on the computers or you need some a3 paper right now and you're producing a mind map with subheadings for possible project ideas best of luck and i look forward to seeing you and your ideas next week